In this lecture, we will define what is commonly referred to as Ebola. We will examine the pathogen's physical structure or morphology, as well as its genetic structure or genome. Remarkably, the genome of Ebola has only seven genes. How then can something so seemingly insignificant create such havoc in the planet's most successful species? Let's find out. You'll often hear the term Ebola used to refer to both the Ebola pathogen as well as the sickness caused by the pathogen. However, Ebola refers to the pathogen, or the Ebola virus, or EBOV, while EVD refers to the sickness, Ebola virus disease. So in the remainder of this uh, course, we will refer to the pathogen as EBOV, and the illness as EVD. So EBOV is a specific variant within the Ebola virus taxonomic group, which contains single-stranded, non-infectious RNA genomes. Now, as we said, there are only seven genes in the Ebola virus genome, and the Ebola virus genome looks something like this. Now, as I said, the genome of Ebola virus has only seven genes. By the way, the L gene here codes for viral RNA polymerase, and that really is the key to turning on the replication process of the virus. So now all Ebola virus variants have the same seven genes. The order of the genes switches around, and that's how we can identify one variant from the other. Now, there are five Ebola virus variants. We have first the Thai forest virus, or the TAFV, that's named for the Thai National Forest in West Africa. That is 0% fatal to humans. We have the Reston virus, RESTV, that does not cause disease in humans. It does, however, cause disease in some primates, but that's named for the city Reston in Virginia. Again, that's 0% fatal to humans. We have the Bundabugyo virus, or BDBV, that's named for a town in Uganda. That's 27% fatal to humans. We have the Sudan variant, that's SUDV, Sudan virus, that's 53% fatal to humans. And finally, we have the Zaire Ebola virus, that's simply referred to as EBOV. EBOV is the most dangerous of the Ebola virus disease-causing variants, as it is responsible for the greatest number of human deaths. It's 79% fatal in humans. And so for this reason, we use the acronym here, EBOV, to refer to this particular variant, the Zaire variant, in the remainder of this course. Okay, Ebola viruses are examples of phyloviruses. Phyloviruses morphologically are filamentous viruses. Ebola variants may take the shape of a shepherd's crook or a U or the number six. They can be coiled, they can be toroid or donut shaped, or even branched. Ebola virus variants are roughly 80 nanometers wide and about 14,000 nanometers from one end to the other. Now, Ebola viruses are uber virulent. In fact, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, categorizes EBOV as a biosafety level 4 biohazard. That's as dangerous as they get. And because of this fact, the virology of EBOV is difficult to study. Nonetheless, researchers agree on this much. When we think about the Ebola virus disease life cycle, once EBOV invades the body, it enters the bloodstream. Now, the variant searches out a receptive cell in the bloodstream, a particular kind of white blood cell with the right receptor. The life cycle begins when the variant attaches to the surface of the receptor. The variant then fuses with the cell membrane and is readily taken in by the host cell. Now, normal cellular mechanisms remove the protective envelope and capsid surrounding and protecting the viral genome. Once released from its protection, the viral genome is translated by the host RNA polymerase, yielding in turn the viral RNA polymerase. Remember, that's the L gene in the Ebola RNA genome. So in essence, the virus hijacks the host machinery to start the process of viral replication. 
Because the Ebola virus genome is negative since RNA, it is in and of itself non-pathogenic. Ebola's pathogenicity, however, comes after its millions of new transcripts fills and subsequently kills its host cell. Once the L gene is translated, it can proceed to translate the other viral genes, which of course code for structural proteins, and the viral proteins will then self-assemble into progeny viruses. As the new viral packages are made, they travel to the plasma membrane, where they exit the cell via budding. So the protective envelope of each new virus is the plasma membrane of the cell from which it buds, so in this way the virus effectively evades the immune system of the host. New viruses are produced at an astounding rate, so much so that host cells die as millions of viral progeny bud from each cell simultaneously. As new viruses are released into surrounding tissues, each is able to, in turn, infect a new host cell, thereby completing the circle and starting the whole process over again. Once released, Ebola virus is able to travel through the lymphatic system, where it continues to replicate with immunity. <laughs> no pun intended. As the pathogenic virions enter the bloodstream, they travel to other parts of the body. Ebola virus then replicates very quickly in endothelial cells that line membranes. Endothelial cells now may be infected within three days after exposure to the virus. And by the way, those endothelial cells line the digestive tract as well as blood vessels. EBOV attacks white blood cells like monocytes, macrophages, in other words, cardiovascular and immune system cells. They also attack neurons of the nervous system, liver cells, that's part of the digestive system, and fibroblasts, that's part of the musculoskeletal system. So EBOV attacks and affects almost every system of the human organism. As the number of apoptotic lymphocytes increases, the victim's immune response decreases, allowing for increasing Ebola virus replication. So the breakdown of endothelial cells leads to blood vessel injury and interruption of the body's blood clotting mechanism. And the resultant widespread bleeding that occurs in infected people causes systemic shock due to loss of blood volume. Ebola virus disease used to be called Ebola hemorrhagic fever because of the extreme bleeding that occurs in victims of infection. We'll talk more about that later. So now that you understand exactly what the Ebola virus is, how it is able to take over the victim's immune system and disseminate throughout the body, and how Ebola virus infection leads to Ebola virus disease, let's appreciate the history of Ebola virus. And we'll check that out in the next lecture. See you then.